This episode of the Gentleman's Scoff Law podcast is brought to you by Patreon and the Gentleman's Scoff Law merchandise page. Go to gentlemanscofflaw.com. In the menu, click the support or shop links to help support the show. You are listening to the Gentleman's Scoff Law podcast. Listener beware. Rise and shine, the liquor store is open. I ain't got time for moping. I best be on my way. Well, I still got time to save my reputation. Time to go day drinking in this dirty little town. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Gentleman's Golf Law Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Crowder. Co-hosting with me, as per usual, is the Don Donovan Fowler. Um, by the way, this podcast, the podcast for the rebel and the renaissance, man, got to get that in there after I say the opening every time. I always forget that. How, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing, you know, You're just, doing? uh, just surviving with my, uh, yeah, just surviving with the fam. Just surviving in the, the quarant hashtag quarantine life. Um, I am going to preface that uh, this episode, uh, I guess, is kind of the Corona cast episode in a, in a way. Um, yeah, because we all know this is going to be over like tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> we've got a little bit. First of all, we've had to change up our format a little bit because, Donovan, you're you're hot, you're bugging out in Kansas. Um, yep. Well, good old KC. And um there's we have a little bit of of tech issues to deal with this because we've got to like record two separate cameras and mics and stuff and there's a little bit of an internet delay sometimes so please bear with us this is our first time having to do this we'll probably get better in the coming episodes because who knows how long this thing will last or the coronavirus not the podcast hopefully the podcast lasts forever (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah. God willing, God willing, the podcast will last as long as the coronavirus, at least. Yes, as long as the coronavirus, at least. At Actually, least. no. Let's not go with that because <laughs> no. that's, that's like a that's positive and negative. Yeah. Buying. Yeah. And we'll. I mean, I'm sure in coming episodes we'll reference the coronavirus, but really we're an evergreen kind of show. Like a, you know, we're not. We're not, it's not going to be Corona centric podcast, even though we'll be recording episodes and broadcasting during the coronavirus pandemic. We'll just be, uh, we'll just kind of treat everything as normal. And, uh, you know, that way if people stumble upon this in a couple of years from now, um, the people that are left after, after everyone is gone, um, they'll still be able to enjoy it and not feel like it's dated. I mean, I like to think that like five years from now, some guy is going to be walking down the road, flipping through podcasts on his, you know, whatever device is planted in his arm and he'll go, uh, you know, I'm just feeling that Corona podcast that the (laughs) film and stuff I did back, back when, back when things were just, you know, so simple, so (laughs) simple. It'll be like, uh, you ever see that twilight zone episode with Burgess Meredith when, uh, like the glasses. Yeah. He's, he's got all the time in the world to finally read yeah, and his yeah, wife's yeah. not nagging him. His boss is not nagging him. Uh, yeah. And then he steps on his glasses and can't read. I, I always like to quote the, uh, the family guy parody of that, which is <laughs> when, uh, Lois has Peter drinking like copious amounts of alcohol because she figures out that he can play the piano. Like, uh, like he can play the piano, like prodigy when drunk, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, I think she goes like, it's not worth you and your brain cells like dying. And then he goes, me and my brain cells are fine. And then it zooms into his head and there's one brain cell and he's like, I'm the only brain cell left. At least I have my books. And then he, <laughs> and then he, and then he crushes his that. glasses and he's like, no, there was time. There was time yet. <laughs> yes. But that is also a classic Twilight yeah. Zone episode. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Basically <laughs> somebody will step on a pair of their earbuds and then that's it. There's no, there's no podcast. Because <laughs> yeah, we all know that that's the only way you can listen. Yeah, it's the only yeah. way you can listen. No, you don't want anybody like you don't want to have to play this over the speakers. Let's just be honest. Yeah. You know, this is kind of a private affair. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, by the way, we got to just do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, what do you got there, okay. Donovan? Well, behind me, I have, uh, you know, just my normal daily supply of toilet paper and uh, Trader Joe's Simpler Times and bourbon. Oh, there you uh, go. So, you know. Just a little bit of hand sanitizer for, nice for luck. Now. 
you know uh but uh, uh other than that i just have water you know because yeah. it's Lent and i can't start drinking this until sunday uh, so that's this right. will all be gone by you know sunday afternoon so yeah. the rest <laughs> that makes sense all yeah. right all those rice and beans are making you use it more um i've got some seven, sam adams 76 lager um it's kind of what i could get because simpler times is all sold that. out it's actually pretty good so i'm using the bottle breacher here to open the uh, that was awkward yeah it was awkward i'm trying to <laughs> i'm looking onto the camera and trying to do it and not spill onto my keyboard because my keyboard is but yeah. re- directly beneath the camera oh that would have been rich and i'm also smoking um some briarworks Ooh. bacon old fashioned <sighs> which I okay, so let me first let me get this lit here and then we can talk about it. Let me get I've got light it up. <laughs> All right. Light it up, my friend. That's the only way to go. All right. All right, I got it going. So people a lot of people complain that this is not doesn't taste like bacon or old fashioned. Um, it's kind of a bright citrusy Virginia type of blend, so it's not super aromatic, but sure. it's actually designed to be smoked while drinking an old fashioned, and the two complement each other very nice. Ooh, mm-hmm. that's you know what that sounds that sounds lovely. That sounds like my perfect uh, perfect evening smoke. And you know, honestly, at the end of the day, it's if it doesn't have that. You know, it shouldn't hit you over the head anyways. It no. shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be smoking and be like, oh, it's, you know, it felt like I just ate a whole piece of bacon and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, washed it down with an old fashioned. No, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's, it's supposed to have the hints exactly. of, you know, whatever. Yeah. But fun fact, you can also smoke it while eating bacon. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I've got, I've actually got my old, uh, this is my Missouri Meerschaum uh, Washington Cobb. So this is my first pipe I've ever smoked. Bought it as a prop for an audition video uh, almost 10 years ago. and uh, Back when you were just a babe in the wood. <laughs> exactly. And then, like, one when I wanted to get into pipe smoking, I remember that I had this in my prop box. And I was, like, pulled because I watched a video. Actually, Aristocob, who we've had on the show. Yep. And uh, I searched how to smoke a pipe, and he was smoking corn cobs. And I was like, oh, I've got a corn cob. I didn't realize you could actually smoke those. But, uh kind of a superior uh, yeah. pipe anyway it's um, a great pipe for for starters my little brother was asking me you know what pipe uh, uh he should start out with and i just i said go ahead and go with a corn cop because it's home. very easy to learn on and easy easy to break in doesn't take a whole lot of time to break in yeah i remember i remember i was telling my little sister a story about uh, when I was smoking my corn cob on community college campus back in like 2009 or something. And I yeah. walked by somebody and they were like, damn, that smells great. And I was just <laughs> like, I was like, yes, it does. Let's do it. It does. It tastes great too. Corn cob pipes don't, I feel like you just, you smoke one bowl and they're broken in. They're like ready to go. They don't yeah. have like a weird, that wood kind of wooden aftertaste or something. Um, I should say later on in the show, we're going to have Dr. Rohan, Francis of uh, the YouTube channel MedLife Crisis. Um, yes, we're going to talk to him about uh, about the the coronavirus and uh, and he and he is more qualified than most. Yes, because he actually has it right now. Correct. I believe so. I don't know, like, because from his videos, I, I think that he he definitely got something. I don't know if it was Corona or not, but we could ask him about. It oh, when well, he comes maybe on. we should clarify that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, he definitely was sick and we had to reschedule, which is why they were uploading this video, uh-huh. this podcast this week and, and, uh, didn't upload it next, uh, last week. Um, so how's your quarantine been? Well, technically it's not a quarantine, right? No. It's more of just like a, isn't it like shelter in place? Yeah. Is that what they call it? Or they call it, they call it different things, different places. I think in Kansas city, they just call a lockdown, but, um, <laughs> I, it's been fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty much, you know, like honestly, when I'm, I'm more of a homebody when I come home to visit family anyways. Yeah. So it's pretty normal. Um, we're pretty well, you know, like my, my, my dad, uh, when, uh, all this started to hit the, the news reels, he, uh, he, he got in the old uh, family suburban and went to Costco and got, uh, you know, got, got a good, you know, couple weeks supply yeah. of just, 
much food just because it was like, okay, well, who knows, you know, like what the craziness is going to be. But, um, cause he's smart like that. We did but that anyways. too. We, we, yeah. I had, we actually have a mutual friend, uh, that, uh, maybe he's listening to this. I don't know. He called me like two months ago and told me, look, Jordan, this is going to be a thing. Um, make sure you get your stuff now. And I, I, he did Was his Jocko warning. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, I, if he wants Jordan, his name. This mentioned. is going to be a thing. Okay. I'll just... <laughs> you got to take extreme ownership and you got to get to Trader Joe's right now. <laughs> yeah, do it right now. Yeah. Um, but um, so I took it somewhat seriously and I did stock up on some things that I was like yeah. would be, um, but I didn't take it as seriously as I should have because then everything that he told me did happen exactly as he had described it two months earlier. And, uh, luckily I had, I wasn't totally left in the dust. I had the things I needed, but I was like, "Uh, I wish I would have been a little more prepared for being stuck in the house for this, (laughs) this long. Uh, yeah, it's true. (laughs) It's like, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. I, I personally, like I was always, uh, trying to get my roommates to, stock up on stuff just for earthquakes but that wouldn't have even been like on the level i mean you know obviously here's the thing i keep going back to like you know spanish flu and all that stuff and we can talk more with the doc about this but it's um obviously it's different you know it's not quite as bad it's just the fact that everything is shut down Mm -hmm. that's the big issue i mean obviously this is also super contagious yeah but um but I, i i do feel like you know, it's, it, it's a good wake up call to realize that you should have, you know, a good amount of emergency supplies in your house. And, uh, you know, I was, I was reading a book by this woman who was wrote, a you know, emergency preparedness book. And she said she lived in Detroit back in the day and a huge snowstorm hit. And she looked in her pantry and she just had half a loaf of bread and two cans of soup. And from then on, she just vowed that she'd never yeah. have less than a week's supply of food in her you know yeah. in her pantry so it's it's a it's a good wake-up call for the world and america to pay attention and you know yeah prepare. definitely yeah build your build your house out of bricks you don't want to be the pig that build his house out of hay in, in this yeah, situation yeah. um that's biblical right yeah i think so don't don't Three build your pigs? house that on shifting that was don't, a jesus parable your, okay. yeah don't build your house on shifting hay yeah on shifting <laughs> um yeah so have you like what was have you what's been the hardest thing for you to find buying with all the panic buying oh uh, simpler times <laughs> simpler times yeah you got a I mean, well stocked with actually, it apparently well yeah my dad did get two cases of it which uh and we, we've been actually at, at a certain point we were uh we we were forced to start resorting to the pilsner which oh, uh, no. is my favorite. i know it's you still know, pretty good though you know it's bad when you have to start buying simpler times pills. Right? <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so as far as what uh, has been hard to get, I mean, they started to ration toilet paper fairly early. Um, obviously, uh, hand sanitizer is totally, you know, uh, it was was gone. I don't know anymore. Uh, I, I don't know. Out of out of all the other stuff, I guess like um, oh rice, I think was yeah. kind of hard to, to find. Um, which made taco night kind of difficult. Um, and then, uh, you know, you know, without uh rice. flour, uh, well, you know, you, you want that Mexican, right? Come on, Jordan. Yeah. You, you, get, get with the, get with the theme of things. Okay. It's taco <laughs> night. Um, it's taco Tuesday. No, but, uh, then, you know, like flour and stuff like yeah. that, which when you're trying to make chocolate chip cookies and you don't have flour. It's just really, really hard. Yeah. So, uh, it's been really kind of hard here in Kansas City, but we're, 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 <laughs> you're if you're out work. there and you're still alive, yeah. just stay alive, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, it's definitely like we. Um, there was definitely it was harder to find some stuff. Obviously, toilet paper and water and all that stuff was gone. Yeah. What we did is it's funny because L.A. County was like there was nothing here mostly. Like when we when I went one day, and then. And we had, like I said, we had a little bit of stuff, but we also needed just like regular groceries and stuff like that, you know, stuff, perishables and stuff. And then going to the store and seeing like everybody bought out everything. So Lacey and I, like we got up early on a Sunday morning and we drove to Santa Clarita, which is about 35, 40 minutes out from where we are to the Walmart that opens like at six o'clock because it's the earliest 
store that opens <laughs> that like of any of the grocery stores. Really? And there was a line still around the building, but we were able to get yeah. a lot of stuff by going in that early and yeah. uh and people not willing to get up that early on a Sunday to go do that. So yeah. <laughs> that's, that's always you can always count on the laziness of people to help you out in a crisis sometimes. <laughs> that was one thing when when Kansas City was announced to go on lockdown like immediately my parents went to Trader Joe's to, to yeah. stock up on stuff. And uh, it seemed like no, uh, nobody had really taken note of what was about to, you know, what was about to happen. But even now I look out the window, people are cutting their yards. Yeah. It's like life is going on. It's just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a strange time. It'll be yeah. interesting to talk to, you know, the doctor, the good doctor about this. Cause I feel like there's been so much, I don't want to say misinformation because that's like a buzzword right now, but like, yeah. it, it, let's just say that the communication channels have been kind of overloaded with information yeah. and not all of it is necessarily correct. Yeah. E even, even stuff that's coming from higher up science is not as reliable as they would like because they're still figuring it out themselves. Yeah. So, I mean, it takes, it's, uh, it takes a long time weird. to study something like this and to know oh, yeah. everything about it. It's only been around a couple of months. It's like, um, and then we've only, I mean, I guess, I mean, yeah, the... sorry, pardon oh, me. Go, go ahead. No, no, <laughs> pardon me. But pardon? Um, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> no. Yeah. I was just saying, yeah. So there's, and, and I feel like there's just like so much, there's, there's the people that are like, come on guys, this whole thing's a hoax. And then there are people that are like, we're all going to die. And I feel like there's somewhere safe in the middle. Like let's take it seriously and let's, you know, do what we can to help everybody, <laughs> but let's not yeah. like turn it into like a political thing. Let's just try and right. stay safe. <laughs> Yeah, well, ultimately, it's like, yeah, I mean, definitely the the politics of the whole yeah. thing, muddy the waters on it and, yeah. and all that jazz. But but no, it is important. And, and I mean, obviously, we're making light of some of the aspects of this. Yeah. And, you know, people have died from this, which is tragic. And that's not good. And, yeah. and we don't want to, you know, we, we don't mean to, you know, make light of the of the actual tragedy that's that is happening because of this. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you know it's uh this is this is something that seems to happen every century and mm -hmm. uh this is part of the human experience it's like disease is is just one of those things yeah it's crazy yeah it's just we've just yeah. we're so soft we've never had to deal with anything like this in the last <laughs> in the last century <laughs> yeah i mean it is it is a it, it, it's it's a huge it, it is a huge it, well, it's, it's such a weird thing to get perspective on because at the end of the day you're like yeah this is a huge thing but it's not really the worst thing and it's not the worst thing yeah. you know like like i said looking at the spanish flu like or even well we'll talk about it later but like yeah. even the swine flu you know, yeah. I think it was 150,000 died from that. So yeah. it's anyways, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll get off. Johnny boy <laughs> we'll actually got swine flu. Topic. Yeah. Really? No way. Yeah. Maybe we should interview him about. Was one of the, well, as long as he doesn't eat popcorn on the mic, I think, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we interview him about it and he's eating bacon on mic. No. Um, <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, this is one of the after effects of it. Yeah. Uh, dude, that's crazy. We should, we should interview him about yeah. that. That would be a perfect, uh, that would be sort of a, a perfect thing. Cause it's been what, like 10 years since the swine flu. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's uh, that's a crazy thing. And that wasn't a pandemic. Um, I don't know if he's been seeing any of this stuff in the news. This is a little bit old. Um, but uh, one of the, the, the funny good, stories sure. that I found is that the kids that were quarantined in Wuhan during their lockdown. So they were they had to go through uh, doing their classes online, basically with their with their teachers, um, yeah. you know, virtual classes, basically, but still with their their teachers doing their homework and all that stuff. And uh it was they had to use some sort of messaging app through the app store um, okay. to do this. Uh, and these kids, they figured out that, and this is true, I guess, with iTunes stuff, if a certain app has a certain number of terrible reviews, it just gets removed from the app store and you can't use it. So, 
But let me ask you this: is this is this a uh, is this a universal iTunes thing, or is this a Chinese iTunes? Thing? I don't know. I think that it is a, like a very Chinese iTunes. Well, I thing. think it is like I think it's like that with like YouTube and stuff. If something gets flagged too many times, like automatically it gets pulled down until someone can review it. I mean, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, well, you know, you know, did you hear the story about the fa- like the thing with fat shaming in China, where like they. Um, you know, like the the policy here is if people start fat shaming people on Instagram or Twitter yeah. or doing something like that, they'll get banned. Right. Yeah. But the Chinese solution to that is to ban the fat people <laughs> because they see them as they're like, they're OK, well, this is like this is obviously the catalyst to all this stuff. So what are we going to do? Are we going to take out like, you know, yeah. all these critics, which are multiple people? I'm not saying it's right. <laughs> no. I'm just saying that the Chinese have been known to do stuff like this. <laughs> they're very totalitarian. They can be very the, efficient uh, with uh, yeah. <laughs> like, But yeah, yeah, well, hopefully, yeah, that, uh, yeah, you know what? It's just another reason to leave a good review on the gentleman scofflaw podcast exactly you, you know all, all of our chinese fans out there they need us yeah so so you know. yeah long story short these kids got out of doing homework because none of them could use the app because they all That's, organized together oh, they all left bad reviews <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's genius yeah so wow um, uh, my little brother's doing uh online classes right now so uh, give him the I'll, tip. I'll be sure to, i'll be sure to pass on that 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 information yeah kids kid, it's like kids are the same all over the world <laughs> they don't want to do homework nobody, <laughs> even during even during a pandemic they're like geez can't we just get a few weeks off Oh, geez. I mean, well, the problem is, is that like once you, you know, once you hear like, oh, yeah, we're going to be doing classes from home, everybody's like, yay. And then they realize that it's going to be like triple the workload at least. Yeah. Gosh, I so, hate you know, that, too. I'm got to make sure. <laughs> I'm glad that they, that they were able to shut it down, at least briefly. I don't know. It's probably back up. But yeah. um, all right. I support you. Let's go to a little segment we like to call. Listener Mail. All right. Um, now's the time of the show where we interact with you, the listener. Um, you can interact with us a bunch of different ways. Uh, what ways can they interact with us, Donovan? Twitter, Instagram, reviews, and, you know, maybe we could give out your address. <laughs> no. You know, no. Take, no. Take them over there and just have a nice uh, cup of coffee. You could give it to... Cup of coffee. You could send uh, actual snail mail to P.O. Box 53, Montrose, California, um, and we'll get that as well. There we go. Uh, any bribes Those are for all our, uh, Yeah, all our elderly, all our senior uh, <laughs> members out there. Yeah, exactly. Or if you just want to send us stuff to review or try out, we'll gladly take that it. That too. Um, you could also leave us a voicemail at man81scoff. Um, I don't know what those numbers are, but if you dial them out on the keypad, you'll get us. All right. Uh, so I put it out on Twitter. Uh, sorry, not Twitter. Instagram. I said, how is your uh, quarantine together. going? And uh, we got some uh, some uh, feedback here. What does that uh, first one say there, Donovan? Oh, my gosh. I, uh, I, w- I was not prepared for this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll start with the first oh, one. God. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> the fir- oh, no. <laughs> the first okay. one comes from the right <laughs> of manhood. And uh, okay. he says, not bad. Australia should be in lockdown by April. People are working from home. Interesting. So is Australia not in lockdown? Or is this outdated uh, comment? <laughs> I, I don't, don't know. Remember. I know. Uh, you know what? It's entirely possible. I mean, you know, it takes a while for things to get here from Australia. So uh, maybe it's, it's outdated. But all I know is that Tom Hanks is in lockdown in Australia. Uh-huh. So... Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know if Tom, I, I, I don't know if Tom Hanks is in lockdown. No, I don't know if Australia is in lockdown. I figure they would be because they're in, you know, South Pacific. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, I bet they are. But that's probably old. Yeah. But thanks for the news. Yeah, thanks for that news. And uh, check out the Right of Manhood. I believe he has a podcast too and a good Instagram channel. I was checking it out. Um, those also, Aussies. Those Aussies. Um. Also, here we got a, a message from Jordan Lewis Fisher. He says, a good start running and working out 
at home to stay sane. Well, that's a good that's a good thing to do, right? Yeah, I mean that's you know it's uh that's that's what that's what you do. You know, it's better than being in prison. Yeah, I I've been I actually was taking a break from from working out and rucking and stuff. We got busy and then got really not busy at all, obviously, the last couple of weeks. <laughs> and, so you have no excuse. And was doing a little bit of hiking. I go on the little trail in our neighborhood. It's, there's never anybody on it. Um, yep. And then it got closed down this week because it seemed uh, like bummer. everybody in L.A. just has been stuck inside and they think, you know what's a good idea? Let's go hiking. And then let's everybody, go hiking. everybody, let's go hiking. I got yeah. some cute new shorts. <laughs> okay. But, <Yeah>. but they're, <laughs> they're, so you they're, can. He's doing an impression of me yeah. when I get excited on yeah. the weekend. <laughs> got my ranger panties. Um, so they're. They're, uh, yeah, so you get a bunch of people that don't normally do this as their, yeah. like, fitness. They're doing it, like, to get out and do something. Yeah, and then nobody wants to go walking around L.A. just <laughs> on its own. Like, that's yeah. not, I mean, I'll walk around L.A. because that's why, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. But, yeah. but, yeah, man, I mean, I, I around here, because I'm out in the suburbs in Kansas City, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's like people are out, you know. It's like the 90s. Yeah. It's like. It's it like. Is kids are out on their bikes playing cul-de-sacs parents are out talking to one another people are sitting out on their porches i i swear to you it has not been this way for 20 years it's the weirdest thing it's it's very it's a very weird phenomenon but i'm i'm liking it obviously i like for the you know you know you got well, i think i lost down know, of it. people's livelihoods and Oh, there uh -oh. you are. You're back. You cut off did for I a talk, sec. Did I talk too much? That was the did first. I talk too much? No, Sky, you just got Sky cut off. Down. You're cut off. No, that was the yeah. first time you dropped ever. I was I was afraid it was going to happen more, so that it could be worse. Skype, <laughs> Skype was like, I'm done with this joker he's talking about. You know, he's talking about liking this whole thing. No, anyways, I, my long and winding point was it's nice to see people out and about and yeah. enjoying life, you know, the way that they, they should be. It's just too bad it took – a math is a massive health crisis to get us here. Yeah. Hey, how many, how much quarantine sex do you think people are having? <laughs> how much what? Oh, oh, well, supposedly we're going to see a Corona baby boom. Yeah. I wouldn't uh, be surprised. What, I, no, totally, man. I mean, it happens after blizzards and stuff. I bet you it'll happen after this, but then here's the thing. It, 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 uh, I, butted heads with another news story that I saw that said that this was going to strain marriages. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. Maybe people just start having babies with other, you know, with people who aren't their spouses. I hope not. I just, I don't I just don't walk think, in on my spouse doing a puzzle uh, in nothing but my skivvies and I go, uh, that sorry, like go. sorry, <laughs> we, we got to do this. No. Uh, I, I, I was, I was about to shut my headphones off there for a second. I was like, I was like, God help us, <laughs> Lord help us. Uh, this, this is a family podcast, Jordan. You gotta you know, keep it keep it G rated. We got another comment there from Adam the Relevator. Let me let me uh, read this one because you hogged the other two. <laughs> I wasn't uh, sure if you're ready yet. <laughs> enjoy your show, bro, bro. It's a good. It's okay. Wait, start over. <laughs> Enjoy your show, bro. It's going good. Watching old school TV shows from the 70s and 80s again. Well, that's that's good. Actually, you know, I did pick up uh, Cheers. Uh, oh, yeah? I was sitting there, I was watching Cheers with my parents, and uh, I was like, you know what? This is actually not bad. I liked it. Yeah, that's. I haven't watched it. Maybe I should pick up Cheers. It's it's a. It, I feel like it would get the gentleman scoff law a, a vote of approval because it yeah. takes place in a bar. And, uh, I mean, Frazier's in it, so what's not to like? Yeah. It seems like I've seen clips of it and stuff, and it seems like it'd be fun to watch. It's just one of those other things you got to start, you know? But now you got all the time to start yeah. stuff, so. Uh, it's um, one of those shows that I feel like you can sort of pick up any time. You yeah. know, it's like you don't need to pick up. Like, it, it, it does have a, a continuity to it, but it's not like, it's not like, you know. It's not like you're you're popping into the middle of the Sopranos or something. Yeah, that makes sense. So what is that? There we've got one last uh, comment there. Uh, this second comment is, or this, I'm sorry, last comment is from Security Samwise's 
respond. That's just dot, Instagram dot. just says security Uh-oh. Samwise's response. <laughs> His username is security <laughs> Samwise. I'm an idiot. Um, I now understand why zoo animals are always pacing. Uh, wow. Makes sense. Wow, that's deep. Speaking that's of deep. Speaking of zoo animals, you guys should watch The Tiger King on Netflix. Have you heard of that? Uh, you know, actually, The Tiger King, I feel like I recently read that in some article, but I don't remember what it was in reference to. What's All right. the deal? With uh, you, your assignment this week is to go watch it, and we'll talk about it on the next show, because it's insane. <laughs> It's absolutely insane. Guys, speaking about assigning homework. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Watch Tiger King, mom. Watch it with the family too. All your how old is your youngest sibling? I feel like that's a trap. My my youngest brother is uh eighteen. Oh yeah. So you guys can all watch it then. You guys are all adults. It's not that bad, but there's some adult themes in it. But it's all true. It's all true. It's a documentary series. I think it's like in six parts. Um, very interesting show. Um, we also have a little voicemail. Again, you can call Man Eight One Scoff. Uh, let's listen to that now. Hey guys, uh, I'm sorry I've been MIA. Uh, it's just been hell up here. You know, true on power and everything. You could put two and two together. I just wanted to say that I really hope. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Sounds like sounds like uh Johnny I, Boy. I'm, yeah. Sounds like sounds like uh I, I'm I'm assuming he's referencing the, the great maple syrup shortage. Maybe uh, up up in Jeez. that neck of the woods. Maybe the RCMP finally caught up to him. Maybe that's what happened too. That's entirely possible. I bet you, oh oh maybe was he in a prison? Oh, he might have been breaking out. Yeah. That's I what don't it know, man. Like. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. It's like with the crisis with the Shortage of maple syrup, and then you know it's possible. You know, maybe he was in prison. Maybe. <laughs> he was just maybe. digging, digging his way through. Maybe. Classic Shawshank. Exactly. Uh, well, we hope you're all right there, Johnny boy. Uh, keep us posted. Uh, we hope you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be back with Doctor Rowan Francis of MedLife Crisis, and we'll talk a little bit about Corona men or women, this one's for you. Let me take a second to talk to you about GORUCK. Now you've heard us on this show talk about their awesome endurance events, which are you know great for fitness and team building, but of course they are known for their amazing gear. Some of the best gear in the world actually. I myself own a GR1 rucksack for all my rucking and training. I also have one of their uh, 30 pound ruck plates, which is so convenient because I could just drop it in the laptop compartment on my bag and I have a weighted ruck. It's super cool, but one of my all time favorite things that they offer are their sandbags. Now, if you've never trained with a sandbag, you're in for a treat. I love that you can keep it in the trunk of your car and take it to the park and you have a gym anywhere. Ever try doing sandbag man makers with 60 pounds? I mean, you get a fun and very hard training session in really quickly. Um, It's a big bag of suck in all the right ways. Now, even if you're not in the rucking, they have tons of sleek apparel for the outdoors in addition to their gear uh, that is tough as nails and built to military standards. Also, their apparel and gear offer their scars a lifetime warranty, so you buy the item once and that's it. You're set for life. But you know what the greatest thing is about GORUCK? All of it is made in the good old USA and by Special Forces veterans, mind you. It doesn't get more badass than that. That's right. America. To check out GORUCK gear, go to gentlemanscofflaw.com slash GORUCK, and anything you buy through that link helps support the show. That's gentlemanscofflaw.com slash GORUCK. Whether it's for your fitness regimen, your, you know, your outdoor lifestyle, or just, you know, a great bag for everyday carry, um, you're going to want to check them out. GORUCK, built in the USA. All right, uh, Donovan, I'm excited to have this guest. I've been watching him on uh, YouTube the last couple of weeks with all this stuff going on. Um, He is a doctor and a cardiologist, and he's got a YouTube channel called MedLife Crisis. Uh, Dr. Rowan, thank you for coming on. 
pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, um, we'll get into a little bit about the the virus here because we've got questions we're dying to ask you um, and need need professional opinions on on this because we've probably put out a lot of misinformation ourselves on this very podcast. But um, tell our listeners a little bit about your background and kind of how you got into medicine and then your your kind of YouTube channel and, and what you're doing with that. Uh, yeah, so I'm, as you said, a, a cardiologist um, specializing in the heart, obviously. And um, I've been a doctor about 14, uh, 13, 14 years now. So um, been around the block a little while. And the YouTube channel just started really in the last couple of years, um, kind of as a procrastination activity um, while trying to do a, a PhD. Uh, which is still ongoing. Um, I'm not sure when that'll be finished, but uh, it was just something to to sort of pass the time. But it's it's become, you know, quite a a major um, part of my activities now. Kind of like almost a second career, um, and yeah, a lot of fun. It's opened a lot of new doors and talking to to people I wouldn't have otherwise talked to like yourselves. So that's been pretty good. How I got into medicine in the first place, I mean. I guess going back a long way now, um, but I've always been sort of keen on on science, and and so that's the focus of the channel as well. It's more the the science side of medicine as opposed to necessarily the um, the kind of career uh, kind of aspects. That's that's really awesome, and I, I really like I love the videos and stuff you're doing too because it's like. You're you're a really entertaining and 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 funny guy, which is n- not what you typically think of doctors, <laughs> and so it makes that information so much more entertaining. I'm I'm a guy that just loves like information and studying things and stuff too, but it's always so much better when it's entertaining and uh, you know has some lightheartedness to it. <laughs> yeah, the way I look at it is, um, I don't necessarily have so much expertise in any given field um and there are quite a few other doctors on on the internet but I, what i can bring is some bad dad jokes and sarcasm and a bit of cynicism so that's, that's, that's what i try and offer <laughs> that's great it's good stuff <laughs> um so i first um kind of i i first discovered your stuff really only in the last last couple of weeks just because of be doing information and research on the coronavirus stuff. Um, I guess they probably the last month because um, my f- I had a friend that called me about it as like an extreme prepper and told me <laughs> told me, look Jordan, this thing's gonna hit Los Angeles and you got to be ready for it. And that was like two months ago maybe. And uh, that, they're, they're ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah, he was. He knew. I, he's like a he was in the military and you know has all sorts of connections and knows things. But um, at first I was like, oh, okay, yeah, w- whatever, Paul. And then I saw it kind of slowly progressing. And like oh i gotta i this thing is coming to the u.s um but your videos are super informative on it and um just had a really kind of balanced uh perspective where like there's a lot of stuff where like especially prep people that are like preppers and stuff saying like it's the end of the world the apocalypse is coming and then there are people that are like like uh mayor of amityville on jaws where they're just like yeah hey, everything's fine there's nothing's happening yeah. like that kind of thing so it's like I feel like there's some healthy balance in the middle there with what you're doing <laughs> i mean that's exactly the intention i had to be honest because i could see there were a lot of people just really not not taking this seriously not realizing that this is a big deal um and a lot of my friends who were kind of crippled with anxiety and panic and i felt that you know there is a kind of middle ground we can we can aim to to tread without minimizing the risk but without sort of completely losing our heads um and you know it definitely i'm i'm conscious that there is a lot more attention on the on the stuff i'm doing at the moment so i've i've had to be a little bit more mindful of what i'm saying than perhaps i i was before where i'd just you know make stupid jokes um i mean i'm still planning on making stupid jokes, but I just have to think about them a little bit more yeah. now. <laughs> just tread, tread a little <laughs> differently. Um, so uh, it's funny, since I talked with you um, when we asked you to come on the show, you actually um, 
seem to have experienced the virus firsthand um, because actually right before we were going to record last week, you're like, I, I, you emailed me like, I, I got the virus and I'm going to be laying low for a while. So let's hear yeah. a little bit about that. How's your experience been with that so far? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I sort of I'll say at the offset that I wouldn't want to suggest that my course is is typical. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just my experience of of what happened. Uh, I'm now at the end of my isolation period, so this this beard's gonna gonna go tomorrow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's my quarantine beard. Um, it's like the playoffs. I mean, I, I mean really, because um, the masks don't fit with facial hair so you have to you have to get rid of everything Makes um sense. but yes yeah, so you know i i just felt uh initially all symptoms in my abdomen sort of just cramps and pain in the in the abdomen and we think about you know 10 to 10 percent to maybe a third of patients get these gastrointestinal symptoms as their as their first sign of, of having something um i didn't really think much of it and then the next day, I just felt really hungover, like uh, I'd been out all night drinking, and I just didn't quite feel right. Had a headache, and then then it quickly all just just came on. Suddenly got a high fever, um, and just felt really lousy, kind of like the flu. Went to bed, slept for a, most of the day, and um, uh, thereafter there was a bit of an I improvement for a couple of days, and then a, a, a quite one of the features that was quite typical was that about day five, I got a a bit of a deterioration, and that's been observed in quite a few patients as well, that um, sometimes the shortness of breath mm -hmm. um, gets worse around that stage. And I, I, it was mild in my case. And, you know, you know I've, I'm, I've got no health problems, um, and I'm in, you know, okay shape normally. So this is probably fairly expected for someone like me but we know that some people are getting almost no symptoms whatsoever yeah um and um and that's one of the key messages we're trying to spread that you know it's possible to transmit this virus without even really knowing you're you're unwell but likewise some of my friends who are the same age as me have been much much more unwell and really kind of laid out in bed for for several days uh, so i think i've been pretty lucky my my baby son uh, who's one years old? One year old. He uh, just got a temperature and then just brushed it off like it was nothing. So he he wasn't really phased at all. It's it's interesting. I don't know a lot about uh, you know viruses and stuff, but is that is is that common with all viruses where there could be such a spectrum of how people are affected by it? Or that's a good question. No, not normally. I okay. mean, it does it does seem to be um, a very wide range of presentations um, for this virus, which, uh, you know, obviously that's the case for many viruses that there is a bit of a range, but it does seem to be pretty diverse in terms of its presentations. Now, whether that's just a case of that we're studying it a little bit more intensely than than other viruses, who knows? But but it, it yeah, it seems to affect people in quite different ways. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always wonder, cause I grew up with asthma. I've always had it. Um, and I wonder how something like that, like how that would affect me. Cause it seems like, I mean, obviously it's a respiratory virus, but how, if that makes me in a worse place for that, or if that's just, if it affects, affects me any differently, is it, do you know anything about that so far? Or? If, if your asthma is well controlled, it shouldn't make any difference. Okay. Um, uh, the, the people who are at high risk, um, obviously, uh, a lot of the patients have been older, but but many, you know, particularly in cases in Italy, here and in the US, we're seeing a lot of patients under the age of 50, under the age of 40, who are having problems, but they tend to be, uh, I mean, some are completely healthy, but the things that put you at a higher risk are pre-existing lung conditions, which are more severe than, than just well-controlled asthma. So, you know, a bristle asthmatic who's been to hospital quite a few times, they'd be at a higher risk. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so what do you what do you think are the biggest um, pieces of information that uh, – pieces of information, misinformation that are out there right mm. now? Because, I, you know, Twitter could be just such a hellhole. I get on there and I see people that are – 
they're tweeting conspiracy theories. Oh, this is all political. You don't need to worry about it. And then people that are like, we're all going to die. And it, it's, it's, there's so much to sort through. Um, I mean, how serious is this for real? Oh, it's definitely serious. It, um, I, I think some of the, I mean, predictions are always going to be challenging. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, if there's a difference between one prediction and another, that's sometimes seized upon by people with a particular vested interest to say that, well, you know, none of these predictions must be accurate. They're all so different. Um, but the best evidence we have now is that it, it, it is a, a major problem. I, I you know, in terms of guessing numbers, sure, that's going to be open to, to margins of error. But we, we can already see from the Italian experience and the Spanish experience where their hospitals are completely slammed and they're, you know, they're having um, many deaths a day. Uh, this is this is not normal. This is this is not seasonal flu. And I think you're talking about some of the misconceptions. I think the two of the most damaging ones have been that, oh, this is just just like standard flu and it's nothing really to worry about which is not the case and the other one is that this is just a disease of the old yeah. um, which I think has led to a certain inaction amongst some people that they feel that this is just some Darwinian natural selection and I, you know some of the comments I've got on my videos are, are really awful yeah. um, so I, th- I, th- I think those are some of the particularly damaging misconceptions. Then you've got the kind of insane ones, like this was a you know manufactured bioweapon in a lab that was targeted to, to, you know, meant to kill Americans. But then, you know, why did they let it go on their own people first? I don't know. But, um, uh, you know, some, some conspiracy theories are, are you, you can just, you can ignore straight off, but some, some are pretty pernicious and damaging. Yeah. Um, and they're the ones with a semblance of respectability. So um, yeah, there's unfortunately, as you say, you know, Twitter online is is really a hot hotbed for some of this nonsense. Yeah, and I I don't I feel like, I mean, it's obvious misinformation spreads faster than the virus itself right now. It's just in this day and age that we lived in. Like, I can't imagine like, and we were Donovan and I were talking earlier, and Donovan, you might have a couple of questions about like the idea of the the, the Spanish flu back in the day. I mean, it was a totally different world, and it seems like it, there might be some similarities in terms of how contagious it was. But the way information spreads and the way people spread is so different now. Yeah, the the world is a very different place. You know, there's much more international travel, and that's clearly allowed this to spread in, into pretty much every country in the world yeah. fairly rapidly. Um, that there are more people. You know, we're seeing spread in in dense densely populated areas. New York is is particularly badly affected at the moment. Um, so the world is is clearly a, a different place. But again, you know, when Spanish flu uh, was wreaking havoc. Our medical care was was that much poorer, so um, I'm confident that it, it won't be a scenario like that. Uh, thank goodness. But um, yeah, you know, it, it certainly is the most unprecedented since since then. Yeah, it seems like. Um, and Donovan, I'll let I, if if you have any questions, I'll let you chime in here. But it seems oh, like sure, yeah. it seems like. Um, uh, that historically this idea of quarantining people quarantining themselves and not you know staying apart from each other has been a way to help combat this but you see so much so many people now that are just they're saying hey i don't want to give up my way of life i'm not saying it that way but like hey i'm going to if i'm going to get it i'm going to get it and there's this idea of like carelessness like you know behind that almost kind of selfish way of thinking, but how important is that to stopping this right now, staying apart and social distancing? I mean, that's our, that's our most powerful number one tool at the moment. Mm. Um, I, I, you know, I think the, so my latest video was, was kind of trying to address this, that I don't want to give the impression that, you know, public health officials and, Epidemiologists are not considering the economic impact of, of what this will will do. Yeah, it's 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 the forefront of everybody's mind. But 
the only tool in our armament right now is is social distancing. This doesn't necessarily have to be for a long time. You know, initially we're we're hoping just for a few weeks, and that will buy us some time to then introduce a, a sort of phased, gradual return to, to normal life. You know, no nobody is. Um, under the impression that that 18 months of complete lockdown is is feasible, yeah. um, so you know I think it's important to to say that those those issues are being considered, but for the time being, the only thing that we can do is is social distancing, and I think sometimes the dichotomy that's created is is a bit of a false one. It's portrayed as do we carry on with normal life versus do we go into lockdown? But there is no normal life anymore. That's not the choice. Yeah. Because if you just carry on without making any adjustments, it's going to be an absolutely catastrophic situation. So either way, the economy is going to take a massive hit. It's yeah. not that one option is economically much worse than the other. Hmm. That's a good point. As a, That's the way that I always see it is like, do we have to kill our economy to 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 fight this thing and it's like first of all personally i think it's like well who right now who cares about the economy if people are dying and we can't fight fight it it's just we'll have a, have a world of people just dying off of this thing and getting sicker and sicker but uh i mean it seems like the outcome of this is going to be that way anyway it's just gonna the economy is going to take a hit and i don't know yeah i mean you know i i, I don't pretend to have the answers here yeah. um and, and certainly you know, months down the line, six months down the line, it'll be a lot harder to 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 know which option. But right now, for me, I, I think it's clear that 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 is the the thing that we can do that will affect the trajectory of this. And the latest projections, which were just just um, uh, updated today by the same team that sort of have been guiding that the government response here have suggested that actually those measures are already starting to, to have some effect. And if they stay in place for about three weeks, then we could really absolutely uh, reduce the numbers from, you know, in the hundreds of thousands to maybe about 20,000. Wow. That's a uh, which, big which, difference. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's, there's uncertainty. I think that's, that's a big challenge uh, that we're dealing with uncertainty here and people don't like uncertainty so they want they want definite answers but the fact that we can't provide them is is leaving it open to a lot of uh, debate and in interpretation but for me i think you know we've got a clear immediate course of action and, and that's what we should do yeah donovan it looked like you had a question there i was just going to ask uh so in terms of countries and how they've been responding to the the crisis and the the health crisis in particular is there any that stand out to you right now as sort of you know uh, ones that have really been doing a particularly good job? Yes, I mean, they're, they're all in Asia, really. Well, I guess Germany uh, deserves praise within Europe. Um, mm -hmm. They have tested very intensively, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of tests. And at the moment, their case fatality rate, which is a number that's based on uh, how many people die divided by how many people test positive. So it's a number that is affected by how much you test. The more you test, the, the lower that number will be. Um, but their case fatality rate's the best out of everybody at the moment, um, which I think is probably, when this is all said and done at the end, we'll probably actually see the rest of us fall into a similar category to Germany. They're just really ahead of the curve in terms of their testing. So their case fatality rate at the moment is about 0.5%. Uh, which is probably where this will end up in the end. Um, but that's still, you know, uh, just over five times the fatality of seasonal flu. Um, so the, the Asian countries that really stand out, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk of South Korea and what they have done, um, and indeed uh, Hong Kong and Singapore, is very intensive um, contact tracing. So Singap uh, South Korea has tested again, huge numbers of people and have been very aggressive in tracing people's contacts, isolating people who've been exposed or um, ha have tested positive without introducing the same uh, widespread level of lockdown. And in Japan, they haven't had a, a lockdown at all, but 
Um, now, I, I, I don't want to speak out of my area of expertise, um, but people, sort of social um, uh, scientists, also talk about the culture in these countries, that they have a, a strong culture of obeying societal norms. And um, they haven't had to in initiate a very top-down uh, lockdown approach because people have been following government advice, which I guess in the West we're just <laughs> not as good at doing. Um, uh, and Hong Kong and Singapore have, have, have been fantastic. Taiwan as well. They're small countries. So, you know, one could argue it's a little easier. But Japan and, and Korea have been, uh, have been the model, really. I think we need to adopt yeah. the Japanese bow instead of the handshake. That seems archaic to me, the handshake idea. Yeah, I mean, the handshake <laughs> might, 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 be, might be gone now. Um, I'll, I'll put a plug in for, for my home country of the Indian Namaste. Yeah. That's, uh, oh, yeah. That's, there you that's, go. That's, I see, uh, that's, that's coming into popularity now as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, that's, I don't the arc, I, I get so grossed out by handshakes. Sometimes, sometimes I don't know. I'm not a germaphobe, but... It's just always some sweaty hand that, and then you yeah. just feel like you got to go wash your hand after, even if it's somebody I know. I, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. <laughs> I, I do, I do worry about the long term effects of this whole thing on people who are germaphobes. Oh yeah, or people with with OCDs and things. I think this is really going to be a, do a number on them. Yeah. Um, I mean, for a start, they'll probably think, "Well, I was I was right all along." <laughs> um, right. Right. <sorry. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Donovan, did you have an, another question? You look like you're. Uh, I just have one more question about. Um, so, in regards to, you know, I'd say I, I, I'm I'm obviously fairly ignorant in regards to you know medical history and things like that. But one of the things that popped up in the last ten years that was fairly significant was the swine flu, mm. and um, obviously, like in the United States, I think alone it killed around I think 150 thousand people. Um, I think the number is right, but, uh, what, what's the, so in terms of like, like, let's say the swine flu was fairly serious. Um, people didn't have quite the reaction to it that they, that they're having here. And I think, you know, part of that could be the contagion effect of the fact that this is, you know, much more contagious. Mm -hmm. Um, but what, what, like talking to the psychological impact of like, what kind of makes our reactions different there. Um, and, and obviously also the medical impact because there's different diseases. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good question in terms of what affects the reaction. I think a lot of this is, is fueled by the, the, the climate presented in the media. Um, I think this was, the, the Chinese were slow to recognize what was going on and so by the time that it, it really became an issue, it, it sort of looked like a, a runaway thing. And mm -hmm. from, from, the, from the start, the media coverage was one of maybe mild curiosity and then suddenly overnight panic and, and horror and, and um, you know, suddenly it ramped up to, to 10. And I think that's really... You know, fuel this this climate of, of fear about the whole thing. Um, I I can't really remember uh, swine flu being um, that big a news story. It was it was certainly in the, in the media, um, but I think it was a much slower timescale as as memory serves. And as you mentioned, it's it's a less infectious disease. So I think that um, maybe played out in in slower motion than this one has. I think this has been very rapid. Uh, I mean, you know, from its inception in uh, De December, we're now seeing it around the world only in March. So it really seems to have moved much faster. So I think that's that's certainly contributed to why it's more of a, a big deal. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. No, for sure. Um, I'm going to shift gears here. Um, one of one of the the videos that I really liked that you put out recently um, was you reviewed the movie Pandemic. Like you did, like a, a Doctor reacts by watching Pandemic, and I actually it's funny because yeah. I 
Con- Contagion. Con- uh, sorry, Contagion, my, yeah. Pandemic yeah. is the Netflix series. The I meant to say Contagion. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's there's so much of that going on right now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Contagion. Yeah, it's trending. <laughs> but I had never I had never seen it, and so I watched it. Uh, at, I watched your reaction, and it was really cool to 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 learn from it. But then I watched the movie too, and I was like surprised at how it all played out very similarly to what's going on right now. It's almost like a prophetic <laughs> movie. Obviously the disease in that movie is kind of like a weird, it's like a Hollywood disease, but uh, what do you think uh, movies get right or wrong about this kind of situation? Yeah. I mean, I think contagion really stands out as being particularly good um, at getting the science right. And uh, that was because they'd, they'd, they'd had, um, several scientific advisors who were uh, very respected epi- epidemiologists and virologists. And um, one of the advisors to, to this uh, script writer actually is, has been one of the key commentators on what's going on now, a guy called Larry Brilliant, who was involved with eradicating smallpox. Oh, okay. And mm. so, so, you know, real credentials in the, in the script writing there. And, uh, that was based on the SARS outbreak uh, in Asia, which is probably the reason why these Asian countries have been so much better prepared for this than than we have, because they have that recent experience in the last 20 years, and they, they had a, everything in place, whereas I think we maybe were a bit more complacent uh, in the West. Uh, so it was ba- based on, on the SARS outbreak and so a lot of the aspects of the movie some of the which I, I talk about in that video uh, are taken directly from that but the virus itself as you say is a, is a kind of hollywood virus because it's it's as infectious as what we're dealing with at the moment but it's as deadly as um, this virus called the the nipah virus mm-hmm. uh, well it's not even as deadly as that nipah was even more deadly but uh, it's got the same characteristics as as nipah which was um had a few outbreaks in India, Bangladesh, and Malaysia. Um, and it's like the coronavirus we're dealing with now. It came from bats, but it was way, way worse. Um, and uh, but thankfully, not very infectious. So oh, good. You tip, you would, you, you, yeah, you, you, you know, it's very hard to... Um, I mean, even, even like, say, Ebola. Yeah. You know, Ebola and Nipah, it's pretty hard to transmit them to somebody else. You, you really have to be in very close proximity to somebody for a period of time who's kind of hacking up their guts and spitting blood all over you. Uh, whereas, as we know, with, with this one, it's it's much easier. Um, but Nipah had a, a fatality rate of about 50 to 75%. Wow. So, you know, that really is horrendous. And, and that's uh, unusual because most, most viruses aren't that deadly. Um, and that's something that Hollywood often gets wrong. You know, like an outbreak... Um, the Dustin Hoffman and Rene Rousseau movie from the 90s, it, it, it's just pretty much everybody seems to die that gets infected um, almost, which is unrealistic. So so Contagion um, had a fatality rate of about 20%, which is still very high, but but more within the, re- the realms of reality. Um, and I think, yeah, they did a great job explaining the science and um, you know, they even talked about social distancing, which is now a buzz phrase we all know. Yeah. So uh, right. really, really uh, ahead of its time. Yeah. Yeah. That was like 10, what, 10 years ago, too, or something? I think it was it yeah, wasn't yeah, 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, that's crazy. And I just remember, like, my wife and I were watching it and we're just, like, looking at each other <laughs> every few minutes, like, that's what just happened. That's what just happened. Um, but it seemed realistic, too, because, like, even the, the head of the CDC and that, like, getting in trouble for, like, letting his, some friends know to get out early and stuff. I was like, that seems like something that would really happen. I mean, if I were in his position, yeah. I would do that, too. But it was, I don't know, I thought it was cool. <laughs> and, and you know, Jude Law's character is the... The kind of um, fake news, yeah. Uh, you know, a conspiracy theorist uh, guy. Again, that was you know yeah. a, a very good storyline because we're seeing that play out at the moment as well. Yeah, with the fake drug right. that he was promoting on there, and, <laughs> yeah. and everybody wanted it, and then you couldn't get it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've we've got a president of America tweeting about um, unproven drugs now, so. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that Jude Law's character was a prediction of Donald Trump. You know? <laughs> Maybe. It's like, sit back and let the experts 
deal with it. Like, there's no, there's no reason to have some conjecture <laughs> input on this right now. Just, it's, it's not going to end up well if you're just, <laughs> if you're, I don't know, speculating on this stuff. But yeah, I don't know. that's funny. Is, is there anything else? Like, it doesn't even have to be like pandemic r related, but like as a medical professional, when you watch TV or film that that you just see and go, oh, this is ridiculous. This never happens. <laughs> I, I tend to be someone who actually quite enjoys um, yeah. when things are completely wrong. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't, I'm not one of these medics that sits there going, oh, that wouldn't happen. I, I, I like it when, you know, I, I'm happy for the story to take priority. But the, um, the thing that's probably uh, my biggest bugbear, <clears throat> because it has actual implications in real life, is resuscitation. Mm. You know, um, CPR and and shocking people and everything, and uh, so some um, colleagues uh, did a study where they actually watched I don't know hundreds and hundreds of hours of movies and TV and uh, audited all the CPR and they found that about eight or nine out of ten uh, cardiac arrests end with a favorable outcome. And and the you know the patient coming back to life, yeah. uh, whereas in reality, um, this is in TV, right? So yeah. it, whereas in reality, it's it's probably more like one to two out wow. of ten. So for an out of hospital cardiac arrest, it's it's very low. In hospital cardiac arrest, it's it's only about two out of ten. Wow. Um, and the the kind of more nuanced side of that is. In movies, it's it's a kind of binary, like the patient lives or they die. Yeah. Whereas in reality, what we actually see is the patient will live, but they'll have a massive stroke. They'll never be able to walk again. They'll be in a coma. You know, so all these this kind of spectrum of badness yeah. um, is not something that you see reflected in, in movies. And so it makes the conversation a little bit harder with patients. You know, if somebody comes in with their 95-year-old 90, grandmother, I know that if, if that uh, patient's heart stops, there's going to be almost no chance of restarting it. So jumping up and down on her chest and cracking all her ribs, and, you know, it's, it's not something I want to do. It's not in her best interest. It's an un undignified last... Mm -hmm hour of life yeah. i'd rather if some, you know if she if she dies a natural death um from you know whatever the, the reason is you just want to, to let her be at peace but if patients families have been given the impression from movies that nine out of ten of these resuscitations work then why would you know me coming to say i don't want to do cpr on your grandmother i sound like i'm denying her a chance of you know almost guaranteed survival yeah so it 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 makes, you know, I'm I, I'm not complaining. I don't think movie makers are, are at fault here. You know, they're they're, they're trying to make some entertainment. Uh, but it just it's something that um, I'd like people to understand a bit better. That that in reality, unfortunately, it's a lot. We're not we're not that good. Yeah, that mm. makes sense. Jeez, I didn't I didn't even think of that. But yeah, that would be that would be a hard thing to deal with on that on that end, having to deal with patients that have just seen all their lives in movies just somebody get <laughs> electrocuted back to life and Yeah. That's that's crazy. Um yeah, there's Donovan, did you have another question? I think I'm I'm good. Yeah, I think that was that was a great perspective from yeah. from an actual expert on on because uh, we're we're both in entertainment. You know, we work in entertainment as our day jobs, so it's it's always good to hear you know the actual kind of the ground level uh, experience. You know, kind of watching that stuff and and hearing about that. So yeah, I love that opinion. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Um, if people want to find your content, um, how can they do that? Yeah, the, as you said, the YouTube channel is called Medlife Crisis. Um, I'm on Twitter under the same name, Instagram, all the usual places. Um, I'm not particularly good at updating some of them, but I'm trying. <laughs> and um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. you might have the best. You might have the best excuse not to update right now, yeah. just because you're. Uh, yeah, I'm a little. So, so I'm back to work tomorrow after my mandatory one week off isolation, um, and I'm. I've always obviously been in touch with everybody at work, but I'm kind of. Uh, 
intrigued to see what's waiting for me when I get there because I think we're just getting now, you know, London, I'm just outside London, it is getting the full brunt of what's going on oh, now, geez. so it's getting worse. Yeah. I meant to ask before we sign off, is there any way, like if people want to, you know, support their local medical staff, is there any way that people could can can help or do something is there something they could do to contribute or something that would make their lives easier because i know a lot of people want to do something but they just don't know what to do i, kn I know it sounds like a kind of um, hackneyed thing to say but really the best thing everybody can do now is just listen to the advice of, of your local health authority in, in your own country and you know the two key things is absolutely adhering to, to the social distancing guidelines as best you can and really only going out when it's absolutely essential, minimizing contact. And and secondly, uh, not clogging up the hospital with with things that are unnecessary. So, I, you know, I, I'm not saying that with a lack of sympathy. I know that there will be problems that people have which um, they want to be dealt with. But while this is going on, hopefully just for a few weeks, uh, please uh, just reserve hospital attendances for, for true emergencies. Um, the vast majority of people who get this will be just fine, will be absolutely fine, uh, and, and you don't need any medical assistance. So that's, that's the only message I'd give, is just um, the hospitals are going to be inundated at the moment, so try and reduce their workload if you can. Okay, perfect. So don't leave your house to bring them donuts and bring the coronavirus to the, to the hospital. I mean, That's it, not a know, good it's, idea. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a very appreciated gesture. Yeah. But keep the donuts for yourself. <laughs> Stay at home, eat, eat them, and, and just, uh, you know, raise a donut to us in, our, in, our abs in your absence. <laughs> okay, thanks again, Dr. Rohan. All right, we'll take a quick That's break. Nice and we'll be back with the rest of the show. And thanks for all you're doing. And, uh, you know, Godspeed with the, everything in London, because, uh, you know, I know it's like you said, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So this part of the show is brought to you by Phoenix Shaving, makers of the most excellent aftershaves, shaving soaps and all things traditional man. One of my favorite products of theirs are their aftershaves. Phoenix Shaving intentionally blurs the lines between traditional aftershave and classic cologne. Each batch of aftershave cologne is created by using traditional perfuming methods, giving the wearer a high dose of quality skin food matched by the staying power of berry white. Now I tell you this stuff is amazing. It'll it'll make your skin feel great after a shave and the alum and menthol just removes all irritation and razor bumps. Um, they have classic barber scents and even more creative soap and aftershave fragrances. Like my favorite is the tombstone scent. It smells like leather, tobacco, and gunpowder. Pretty unique. So ditch those vials of chemicals you buy at the drugstore every month and grab some artisan soap and aftershaves from Phoenix Shaving. Go to gentlemanscofflaw.com slash shave to help support the show and get some fantastic manly grooming products. Phoenix Shaving. Shaving outside the box. All right. Um, what a great guest. Our first oh, that was that was awesome. First guest of 2020 on the new series and then uh, a new season and so informative and uh, just a great guy. We got to have him back on. Yeah, seriously. No, yeah. I mean, that's the beauty of a guest like that is that he. Uh, I mean, he's you know he's been doing medical commentary before this. So the next uh, the next big pandemic that swings around, you know, we'll uh, we'll have him on. I hope it's a cookie pandemic. Um, <laughs> Sk skittle pox skittle pox anyone, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> um no but yeah, but seriously he was uh i mean he, he was very like he really nailed a few of those questions like he he just gave he gave some great information yeah and uh pretty humble too you know he's not like i i don't get the the vibe that he's uh he's doing it uh for the you know for the fame yeah for sure. There's so much misinformation out there too. It's good to have uh 
have somebody that's that's that knows what they're talking about because uh, we don't know what the hell we're talking about. Cool. Um, yeah. This <laughs> oh, is verified. All right, I'm I, okay. I want to mention a little uh, a little thing. Uh, still time to enter the giveaway uh, for the Agartha uh, Phoenix shaving aftershave splash and and uh, cologne. Um, mm-hmm. Let me see here. It looks like let me look at the show notes. It says Agartha has. I don't know what a lot of these things are, but they sound fancy. We've got fancy. ambergris, ambergris, French vanilla bean, Japanese sandalwood, cedar, and oak moss. And it's uh, it's it's the third in the trilogy on his adventure series. So um, if you can see that, if you nice. look at it on Instagram, I, like I don't know. My 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 webcam isn't. Uh, hey. Can't but, can't see it. Can't see it. But there's a picture on Instagram and the link in the show notes with all the instructions on how you can uh, enter to win this thing. Um, it's a good value too. I mean, one of those bottles like thirty five bucks. It's a. Uh, I know, uh, and, they, and they'll last you a while. It's a. Yeah. All, all you need is just a little, a, you know, a few, a few, uh, few squirts. Yeah, a few squirts it. here and there. Is that the right? Is that the right thing? It's a squirt. splash, I guess. Yeah. It doesn't really squirt. Splash, yeah. Splash is better. Splash is better. It squirts at you. It's doing something wrong, or you're doing something yeah. wrong. All right, <laughs> who knows? Um, <laughs> let, let's, uh, uh, if people want to support the show, Donovan, how can they do that? Oh, jeez, didn't we do this already? <laughs> um, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram. You can leave us a review. Uh, which we very much appreciate. The Chinese don't wipe us from iTunes. <laughs> and uh, you, you can also find us, speaking of iTunes, you can find us on platforms like iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, probably the Google Podcast app, yeah. I think. Who uses uh, that? But it's and there. And YouTube. I, I actually use it. I, I, I use it after. <laughs> you always call me out on all the, <laughs> like, you're like, who uses SoundCloud? I'm like, I like I use SoundCloud and I deleted SoundCloud and I'm like, I'm only going to use the Google app. And now you're like, who uses the Google app? Well, that makes sense because um, you're on an Android, so you wouldn't use iTunes, which is what I just use. This but, is true. Yeah. I think that's the only other yes. other than if you're using it on Spotify or Stitcher. Yes, that is, that is a, a fact. Um, yeah. And also you... Yeah, if you can't find it on Spotify, find it on those. Yeah. And always there's, you could always support us on Patreon and you could support us by buying some merch from the shop. All those links are in the merch. show notes. Um, Donovan, you March st- merch. Yeah, March merch. March merchness. <laughs> um, merch madness. <laughs> um, <laughs> Donovan, you stay safe in Kansas. I thought you were going to say you stay sober. Um, that too. Uh, I will stay safe. I'm going to try to stay healthy. Uh, speaking of squirts, little, uh, you know, little, little uh, hands. Yeah. Especially after touching the keyboard. For the old, uh, for the old, but, uh, yeah, yeah I, absolutely. Uh, especially after, you know, talking to so many guests, I know. Microphone. you never know what's going to come through. That, so many, that is not verified medical information, by the way. Um, so many but, virtual uh, handshakes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yes, you stay safe as well. And, uh, and you are a, uh, gentleman in a scoff law. and you as well. And you My friend. guys have a great week. This has been the Gentleman Scofflaw Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Visit us on the interwebs at gentlemanscofflaw.com. Captain says, there's ice on the river. We ain't getting home if we don't break through. So damn cold, I can't help but shiver. We ain't getting home if we don't break through.